Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me for prayer time. I wanted to talk to you about being too busy to be thankful or be grateful or however you want to think about it. What are the things in life that you, or, or can you think of a time in your life, I should ask, in which you have honestly forgotten to say thank you because you've been too busy or had something else on your mind? You may not realize how frequently we do that. And a lot of times we don't even realize it. Here we are, the week of Thanksgiving, and most of us, like us, already have our Christmas trees up. We're already thinking about Christmas and the big day. And Thanksgiving is kind of this, I guess, the preliminary, if you want to look at it that way. I think a lot of people feel that way. And rather than having this state of mind of being grateful and really looking at the blessings we've received throughout the year, and particularly during this time, we tend to focus on that which we have to do to prepare for Thanksgiving, and even more than that, what we need to do to prepare for Christmas. I remember there was a time in which many of us would never consider going out on Black Friday. Well, it's sad to say I fell for that, and I started going out on Black Friday, as many of you probably also do as well. And it's almost as though we've, we've had our moment of Thanksgiving, and then we hurry up and close the door and start to focus on the next thing. It happens too often. We are preoccupied. We are always thinking about the future, and we don't hesitate for just a moment to say thank you. And many things that we take for granted are immense in our lives. There's so many times we can look back and, and re recall moments when people were good to us, when things went our way, and we never even stop to thank someone or particularly thank God for the goodness he showed us. Now, you would think that if you'd been sick for a long time and got better, you would be thankful for that, particularly if there was a, a certain doctor that came along that diagnosed the problem after some time had passed and you got better. You would think certainly you would be grateful for that doctor. I always think about whenever I have an ailment like a cold or the flu or even something like canker sores, I think, oh, I'm never going to forget what it's like to feel good again. And isn't it amazing how after just a day or so, we just forget all of the terrible issue that we had with our previous sickness. It just goes away and sort of flutters out of our life, and we're not even grateful for feeling better. We just completely take it for granted and neglect being grateful. There was a time in which 10 individuals were struck with leprosy, and Jesus encounters them. And it happens in the Gospel of Luke. If you have your Bible, you might want to look with me at it. At it. It's Luke chapter 17, and it's verse 11. Luke chapter 17. It's going to begin with verse 11, and it's going to go through verse 19. So it's not a whole lot of reading. But I want you to listen to what takes place. It says, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Now Galilee was part of Israel, but Samaria was where the Samaritans lived. And these were traditionally people that had ill will towards Israel and the Jews had ill will towards them. They were sort of like half-breed Jews. What do I mean by that? Well, part of the land was occupied by prisoners from Gentile nations who intermarried with Jewish people that were left there. And we had kind of a mixed-breed offspring, which were known as the Samaritans. So the Samaritans were looked at with a little bit of disdain by the Jews, and because of that... That was returned by the Samaritans. So anyway, Jesus is walking along the border of Samaria and part of Israel. It says, as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance, which was required by law. You could, they couldn't get close to you. They had to cover their mouths and their face and yell, unclean. And it says they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice so Jesus could hear them, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Now, the old law of Moses told us that what was required for someone who was cured of leprosy was to go and present an offering or to present themselves before the priest, and the priest would declare them clean from leprosy. Now, prior to Jesus doing this, uh, apart from Naaman, who was a Gentile, he wasn't a Jew, there's not many accounts of individuals being healed of leprosy. Now, I say prior to Jesus' walking here on earth, there's not a lot of recorded cases of that healing, so there was very little opportunity for priests to declare people clean again from leprosy. Now, 
A side note is it may not have actually been leprosy. It could have been some skin condition, but I tend to believe in this situation we're probably dealing with leprosy itself. So he tells these guys to go show themselves to the priests, and it says, as they went, they were cleansed. Notice they were already moving towards the priest, and then the healing took place. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. We don't know how many of the others were Samaritans, but we do know that this one was a Samaritan. I have a feeling he was the only one, and I'll show you why I think that in just a moment. So this guy comes back. He realizes he's healed. You would think that if you had a terrible skin condition like leprosy in which the numbness of the the fingers would eventually, what would happen, people used to think that their fingers would fall off, but what actually happened was the feeling would leave them and then things like rats would eat their limbs or would eat their, their knuckles and, and they would lose their fingers. They'd wake up with no fingers. It wasn't because of the leprosy. It was because the rodents would eat their fingers and they wouldn't wake up during the night and know anything about it because their hands were completely numb. Now, you would think after being healed from something like that, that incredible numbness and that horrible plague which kept you from socializing, you would recognize that you had been healed and be grateful for the one who had intervened, obviously, on your behalf. Prior, they had leprosy. They weren't getting any better. But once Jesus gives them this order to go, all of a sudden, one of them says, hey, something's happened to my body. He goes back, recognizes the source of this healing is Jesus himself, falls down before him, praises God in a loud voice. He's at Jesus' feet, and he says, thank you. What has happened in your life that you have completely taken for granted? your marriage, your family, your children, your job, and you've never thanked God for it. Never. Because you didn't see him at work. You were so caught up in the moment, so caught up in the responsibilities, in the future, doing what you had to do to maintain, and you didn't even, you neglected the opportunity to have thanksgiving. Then it says, Jesus asked, verse 17, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? I'd say that's about par for the course, wouldn't you? One out of every ten people being grateful. Maybe not even that good of a percentage today. Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? He calls him a foreigner because it's a Samaritan. It's not a Jew. And he's thinking the God of the Jews, the God of the Hebrews has healed all ten. And the Samaritan is the one that comes to thank God for what has been done. Verse 19, then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. I think it's interesting. He doesn't tell him to go to the priest. He doesn't tell him not to go to the priest. Maybe there's no need now for him to go to the priest. He's a Samaritan. He probably was not familiar with the Jewish style of worship or the Jewish laws. He may have been because he was in close contact with some Jews, I'm sure, But nevertheless, Jesus tells him to go. His faith has made him well. He has been grateful. He has obviously recognized the fact that the Hebrew God has healed him. And therefore, to his credit, I don't think he has to appear before the priest. I'm not saying that. Jesus could have been telling him, go on with the others and present yourself to the priest. But more than likely, since he's acknowledged it, I, I believe that Jesus is telling him, you can go home. Your faith has healed you. And you have acknowledged God. These priests won't know what to do with the other nine because they've probably never seen anyone healed from leprosy. That's why I believe it is true leprosy because of the fact that this is something that Jesus tells them to go to the priest, to appear before the priest. And according to Mosaic law, when someone was healed of leprosy, that was what they were required to do. So what is the big event in your life that you failed to say thank you to God for? It's Thanksgiving. It's a time to be grateful. I'm sure it won't take you very long to think of a time when you have resembled the nine and not the one. Let's have thankful hearts, grateful hearts. We may be facing tough times in our lives, but we're not facing them alone. Jesus is there with us through his Holy Spirit. He provides for us. He looks after us, and he nourishes us each day with his love and care and touch. Let's give him a moment tonight and acknowledge his goodness to us and be thankful.
Almighty God, I praise you tonight for who you are. And I know there have been times, as a matter of fact, this morning, you got me out of bed. I didn't say thank you. I didn't say thank you for allowing me to give the gospel message today. I didn't say thank you that I'm employed by a wonderful church with great people. And many of us also, those great people, failed to thank you as well that we have such an incredible Savior who died that we might have a relationship with the Father. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for good health. Thank you for an opportunity today to share online the good news about Jesus. May we take this and share it ourselves with others who need to recognize what we owe to the Lord can never be repaid. We can only be grateful that it has been provided by that same God, the one who died at Calvary's cross for us, so that we might be able to stand before him. Help us today, Lord, to acknowledge that we need to be more thankful and to have grateful hearts to face the week that sets before us. Let it not just be one day, but let it, Father, be a way of life. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for joining me tonight for prayer time. I want to remind you that this week, normally we have Carry Hope Ministry since it's Thanksgiving. We will not be having that this Thursday, uh, but I hope that you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hope to see you in church next Sunday. God bless you. Have a great week.